Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Check hands with somebody. Big time on me. And he went to be with the Lord. Amen. Thank you. And if we could only catch, when we have our own mind and we make up our choices, how messed up things get. Big time. Let me ask that what I'm saying. But if we allow God to work in us, He just fixes things. We still got that battle going on inside. But you know, then it's, it's kind of like what he said on the cross, now it's finished. And you know, when we when we get down to this and turn our life over to God, it's finished. I mean, the sin that has been run rampant in our life has controlled us, no longer has control. Well, this young fellow here was a Native American. And all I can tell you, he was a character. Come here, young man. Yes, sir. He was a little bigger than bigger than him, but he had the same kind of haircut. Now I don't know about you, but there's something inside me. I'd go up and shake his hand. You're gonna have to get a haircut, or you're gonna have to leave. Get a haircut. He got. I don't know how he did it, but he just he get all tickled. Thank you. Sir. Robert, you're not Native American, stop. <laughs> but he turned his life over to Jesus. And he's still got about his ups and downs. But you know, he, he kept trying and coming and searching and seeking the Lord and doing outreaches. And he and Vicky, because they're both natives, were working the reservation, just trying to get Jesus, the light to shine down there. Well, I'm going to get Vicky to come up with you. Just come up, Vicky. He, he had cancer. And he just passed away. And so we just want to take a couple of minutes tonight. How old was he? I think he was 37. Going on 10. It was fun. I loved him. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Vicki Slaughter. And uh, I'm a tribal member from Hill River. I live in District 6. Oh. My family's from District 7. And... Uh, Jesse Austin was our brother in Christ who went home to the Lord. He um, was in prison when uh, someone went to minister to him. I believe that was Pastor Gator. And uh, Jesse made his way here and went through the mission, got into church on the street, and uh, he was tired, uh, like Pastor Wall said, of running and gunning. He had been in trouble all his life. And uh, in and out of jail, in and out of prison, and he knew he wanted something 
different. And he found that here. And um, it changed his life because he was a very hard person. And a lot of you remember that and know and knew and know what I'm talking about. But when he came here, he gave his life to Jesus. <laughs> and it changed. I mean, I watched a person coming here that was very hard and very rigid. And when he left, he didn't, he didn't complete phase one, but he left and he went to Hill River and he continued to do the outreaches. Before, um, before he left, he was able to go out with us to help build a church in Hill River, to clean yards, to give bikes to the children from PFA, to give turkeys to people, to our people from Hill River. He was very happy and very proud of that because he had done so much bad and so much wrong to our people that he said, you know, Vicky, I want to make it right. I want to do something good for our people. And so God gave him that opportunity to do that. He gave him that opportunity to mend those broken relationships that he had with his family. He got his children back to reconcile with him, his older children. He got to reconcile with the mothers of his children. He never married them, but that's what he wanted. He was forgiven by his family for doing all those wrong things. And in the end, when he got to go home, when he was diagnosed with cancer, he was in jail. He was in, in Sacraton jail. He wanted to come back here, but the Lord had a different plan. He was in Sacraton jail, or Hill River jail. They found out he was sick. They sent him to the hospital, and that's where they found out he had cancer. It traveled real fast. It, took, it wiped out his kidneys real fast. He was transferred to three different hospitals within two weeks, and the police, they let him go. They said, we're, we're not going to watch him anymore, okay? So you can go visit. So I went to visit, and his family got to visit. That's all the Lord, because he was thinking he was going to go to prison, and he was going to do more time. But you know, when God intervened, and it was God's plan, it wasn't our plan, and we don't know what God's plan is. It's so much greater than what ours is. You know, Jesse was ready to go back to prison, but the Lord was ready to take him home. He was done. He had finished. You know, he learned what he needed to learn. He had come to terms with things, and he was ready. And the last time I saw him, he was happy. He knew what was going on, and he wasn't in pain. And that right there is a testimony for the Lord. And he was born. People to know that everything he went through, you know, was for Jesus that he would want people to know that even though you've been in trouble all your life and you didn't have an eighth grade education, you know what? You can still be forgiven. You can still be saved. Amen? So I'm going to ask uh, Pastor Jim to come up for a moment because Pastor Jim knew him, Michael Mills, and his wife to come up real quick because they have something to share because they knew Jesse and he touched their lives and they touched his. It's such a good thing. I wrote on here, sense of humor, heart of gold, bad temper, very naughty, but very committed to being a Christian. He was, he was naughty, man. Was, he, I think he was phase one three different times, never for longer than maybe six weeks or two months. And uh, he, he tried... He had an alcoholic family, very severely alcoholic family, a very abusive dad, abusive brothers. He had, to a certain extent, brain damage from his dad hitting him in the head so much when he was little. Uh, so physically abused, always told he was a loser, a bad kid, a dummy, and you know, on. He'd grown up with this. Um, but he loved his mom and he loved his five sons. I used to, uh, I managed uh, a couple other properties before a couple years ago, my father's house over there, and uh, some of the naughtiest of the naughty disciples and disciples were put out with these put on one of those properties. And that was my, my and Jesse and stuff. And I'll tell you, they boil boards. 
They were not <laughs> I kicked them off that property so many times. <laughs> For months they were there. Renee was one of them. <laughs> Renee was on the women's property. Sandra was there. Yeah. Anyway. But Jesse, Jesse was, he had a heart of gold and he was a very, he was like what you call, like a lovable, naughty person. A very lovable and a very lovable laugh. He really wanted to be a good Christian. He had a real serious problem with self-control, and that's a lot of us. You know, I had I had a lot of that problem. I I first heard about being a Christian when I was a teenager, and it took me 40 years to get here. But uh, but Jesse was very good, and he even though he couldn't really make it in phase one here for for the full six months, he was always at the Gila River Indian Reservation outreaches. Never failed. He was always there, and he was always asking me for another Church on the Street shirt because he loved. The church on the street, red shirts. And I, I saw him a few times around town, down on Van Buren. He'd always have a church on the street shirt on because he really felt that he was church on the street, even though he never graduated. No, but I feel I feel he's listening right now. He knows he graduated here. He's, as Pastor Walt said, this is a family, and he's part of this family. Yeah. 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 The biggest part of anyone I ever met, he was my best friend. <laughs> You know, it was, it was so delightful. I look at him as a Native American dentist and menace. <laughs> he, when, when you were around him, and he was, you know, not tormented by that anger, he loved life. And he just, it just bubbled out of him. And you know, when you find out about people's backgrounds, and you, and you can see why we are the way we are, but then we've got that blessed hope because of what Jesus is able to do in our life. That's why, is Sarah in here? Female Jesse. <laughs> Dennis the man is at. <laughs> Look at the smile. But you know, here, here's what we need to do. We need to just realize. Now we've all got our pain and struggles. We've been there and done that. Just think about let, let's concentrate a few minutes a day on what's going on, what's happening down in the reservation. And realize when the light shines in the darkness, what God is able to do in people's lives. Amen. And she's been in one of them. And we got some dear sisters here. One of the pastors is, is in Pastor Arnie. And we've been down there fighting this fight for a long, long time, just trying to, to learn how to establish the presence. And Jesse was a star. He was a good one. And Sarah's a good one. So what we need to do is just pray for those dear people down there. That the power of God, in fact, what we need to do is the kingdom of heaven suffered violence. The violent take it by force. Why don't we just get down forcefully and just start praying and coming against the forces of darkness and pray for these, for Sarah and, and Vicky and the people who are going down there. AJ, is AJ in Go get him. Hey, Jay, if you're over there, come on over here. Anyway, just think about this. It's when, you know, it's fun to watch people grow. I don't care how old they are. It's fun to watch kids grow up, just the, the, the little ornery streak in them. And so we're so we're little ornery. So what? God knows us. He loves us. He's more than able to straighten things out and give us a peace and a hope. I'll never forget this very quickly. And Vicki had a cousin that just recently committed suicide. She had a cousin that just committed suicide, but she would because of one of the outreach she went down there, and her female cousin got saved. Now she's still struggling. She's a brand new Christian, but we need to pray for her and let and, and these people. Just can you imagine this light shining in the darkness, and they're gonna 
course, the enemy's going to fight it. They're, they're going to fight it at first. And all of a sudden, they're going to look and say, what do they have? That's what I want. Amen. Um, well, today, I kind of struggled a little bit. I came and talked to Pastor Walt, and um, I I've been here, it's going to be two years and like, I got six more months. <laughs> I went to talk to the town that um, might want to leave. <laughs> I'm really, really struggling with my sister and her addiction. She has two kids. And I feel like I'm to blame for being the sister that I was out doing dope and just thinking and not caring about anything. And my mom came to visit me yesterday here and we just talked and we cried. And I told Pastor Wall that I'm so confused. I know that God is not a God of confusion, but I didn't know what to do. I want to stay here and serve the Lord, but I also, I feel like I need to be there for my family. And you know, I said, if, if I leave my commitment, you know, where would I be? And, you know, he suggested I stay, which I kind of, you know, my heart, I know I need to stay, but it's just a struggle. <coughs> just, please just join with me and pray for her, because I know that we all have family yes. that are lost and are doing what we used to do, and we don't realize what we do. I didn't realize what I was doing until I came here, and I, and I got the relationship with God, and I feel like, I feel like it's a punishment, but it's also opening my eyes to see what I did. And I'm really, just really, really struggling. I'm really, like, Robert Walker talked to him today, and he helped me to realize what, what we did and how long it took us to get here, but we're here. Yes. And that's, that's right. important. Yeah. That's right. <coughs> I know, so leaving is not the answer, I know that. But I just really, 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 really struggle right now. Jeez. It's really hard. So we'll just please keep <coughs> in prayer. Yes, yes. Especially my sister, I don't, understand. I don't understand. I'm angry, I'm angry at things that happen here, I'm angry at things that happen there, and I, I don't want to be angry. I don't want to be angry anymore. You know, God took that and he is my, my joy and my strength. And Pastor Wall helped me to look at scriptures today. And he just, I needed him. And the Holy Spirit used him to help me today because I was ready to just walk out. You know why she wants to leave? Because the devil don't like her. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. And I'm telling you, she's the key, one of the keys right now to that reservation. And if he could get her back down there, I'll never forget Milton Rock, 1987. I met him in prison. Native American, loved God with all his heart. He, he used to cry. He didn't even know him. He'd be in the service, and the conviction of God would hit him so strongly. I got to get out and, and tell my people about Jesus. And he did. He got out. And he started telling them. And they says, fine, we'll listen. Come on in and have, you know, you can sit and talk to us while we have a beer. <coughs> and guess who won? Next thing you know, he started drinking. So the enemy's going to fight her. What we need to do is her, hold her up in prayer right now. And her sister, her sister's what, 28 years old? Wow, child. Young ladies, you know what you're like? I know we've got 119, and she's bouncing off the walls. <laughs> but that's fine. That's what young people do. And she don't want to hear nothing about the Lord right now. She wants to do this party. She's got two kids. And, and what we need to do is, first of all, we just need to pray for those people down there. Pray for her. Pray for Sarah and Sarah's sister. How many are willing to make a commitment to pray? Let's say five minutes a day. Everybody wants to make a commitment. Five minutes a day to pray. Stand up. You're going to pray for Sarah and the Indian Reservation down there. The Native Americans for five minutes a day. I mean, pray as hard as you can. Amen? Now let's pray right now that she has peace, that she realizes that the enemy won't fight her, but she's got some people behind her. She's got a church behind her, people that care, and she's going to be more than able to endure. And then when God starts using her, God's going to, God's going to really accomplish something. Pastor Darlene, would you pray for us?
Aunt Angie, oh, I'm sorry. Aunt Angie, I got it mixed up. Come on up here, Aunt Angie. Sense. 
We need to start contacting all the churches down there. All the natives, their churches. And maybe he could be the one to do it because he's very good at the administration. And let them know what the needs are. That they can start praying. Now, we're pale faces. But we really, really want to just help them. And I don't know how. You know what it's so neat. They're the red skins. And we're the red shirts. But I think if we can do this, not to offend anybody, just to try to communicate. Since he's native, he'll probably help me with his sensibilities. And I can see us maybe having big dinners, or, you know, we're, we're recording our church services here. We get pretty first to somebody record their church services. We can get all kinds of tape. Everybody's got a, you know, a, a VCR player. And we can just, what do you think? I mean, we're doing outreaches. In fact, Sarah, are the tomatoes still talking to the cucumbers? I mean, vegetables. She goes down there every uh, Thursday night and shows movies. We've been playing, you know, basketball with, with the natives. We're really, we're, every time they have a big event, they invite us. We play baseball. They beat us at everything. But we just really, truly want to get involved. Now, you are pretty good friends. With, with Jesse? Yeah. Well, actually, I was sitting over and over and I was just thinking, like, well, when you told me last week, you said, Pastor Jesse, I'm like, who are you talking about? I, little did I realize that it was Jesse who used to do the outreaches with. And, you know, uh, I knew Jesse ever since we started doing that outreach. And, you know, one thing that I uh, could tell you is that um, he really did have the love of Jesus in him. You know, uh, we were both, uh, you know, uh, on different spectrums in, when we were in prison. Because we came from different tribes. But... We gathered, we, we came together for the sake of Christ. And that is how I know that my brother Jesse, you know, had the love of Jesus in him. You know, we, uh, we went out there and, you know, we gave it our, our all. And we went out to those outreaches together. And, you know, just, just seeing him, you know, labor and just talk to people, it was a blessing to see because, you know, not too many, uh, I haven't really crossed too many Native Americans here, but... You know, to see Jesse, that really gave me encouragement too. You know, because you know, as a body of Christ, you know, we need to encourage each other and love each other. And that's one of the reasons why I also stand up here today is because he's sown into my life as well. And you know, I just want to you know send prayers out to his family. And you know, I didn't know it was Jesse until now, but you know, I pray for his family and he's he's done a lot for this ministry as well as for the outreach as well. And, you know, praise God that he's with uh, Christ right now. Amen. Now, I'm not perfect. Jesse wasn't perfect. AJ's not perfect. Vicky's not perfect. Nobody's perfect. Sarah, let's just come together as a family to do the work. I believe God's called him to help down there. Yes. And he's called each and every one of us to do our part. How many want to just do our part? You know, we start doing it here, we're going to go to Mill Avenue, which we go, we have a different mentality as we go on the streets, as we go to the jails, we go to the prisons, a lot of the kid out, kids outreaches and nursing homes. We need to go show them the love of God, the power of God, and have the fight, the fire in us. Heaven of kingdom, heaven, some are violent, but the violent thing is my force. Amen. In other words, we need to do this with all our hearts. Amen. Let's give glory and praise God.